Hello everyone, I'm Akash from Google Cloud's Apigee. Welcome to the Edge Runtime Errors module of the Apigee Troubleshooting series. In this video, we'll have a look at the 500 internal server error and possible causes which are specific to Apigee Edge. We will also demonstrate a real-time 500 internal server error along with steps to diagnose and resolve this error. So, what is a 500 internal server error? It is a generic catch-all error response returned by the server when no other error code is suitable. Typically, this error occurs in Apigee Edge if there is a failure during the execution of any of the policies in the request or in the response flow of the API, or if the backend server is unable to process the request due to an unexpected condition. Here is a sample 500 internal server error caused due to a failure in service callout policy. If the service callout policy fails due to any 4xx or 5xx error from the backend service, then Apigee Edge always returns a 500 internal server error as the response. In this example error message, the key information to be noted is the reason field in the fault string, which indicates the actual cause for the service callout policy failure. In this case, the service is temporarily unavailable. Typically, this error occurs if the backend application or server is down for maintenance, the backend application or server is overloaded and unable to handle any request, the specific ports are not open on the backend server, or the firewall rules are blocking the ports or source IPs. Let's troubleshoot using the UI trace and understand the actual cause for this 500 internal server error with the following example. Consider a service callout policy which calls an external service using the target server called GSC demo target. This configuration uses a host name and a port for connection. Now, let's send a request to this proxy and trace the result. As you can see, we have received a 500 internal server error. If you examine the trace in detail, you will notice that the service callout policy fails after approximately three seconds with the reason the service is temporarily unavailable. This error can be caused due to a number of reasons. Let's try and figure out the cause. This error usually happens if the backend server is down either for maintenance or some other reason. So as a first step, let us check if the backend server is actually up and running. I see that the service is not running. So this could have potentially caused the error. Let me start the backend application and resend the API request. Oops, we still get the same error. Let us now check if there are any firewall rules preventing the request from reaching the backend server. In our example, the backend is a GCP instance. As you can notice, the firewall rules does not allow HTTP or HTTPS traffic. So I'm going to update the rule to allow traffic over the HTTP port on which the backend service listens. Now, let's send the request again and see if the issue is fixed. Wow, we now got a successful 200 OK response. Make a note that this example shows a backend service running on a GCP instance. Depending upon your specific infrastructure service provider, default firewall configurations may vary. Please consult your network administrator for any further help. In this example, we saw how to diagnose and resolve a 500 internal server error caused due to the service is temporarily unavailable in service callout policy. So let's recap. We found that there are two different causes, namely the backend server was not running and to address this potential issue, we've restarted the backend server. Further, we noticed that the firewall rules were preventing the connections on a specific port. 
So we modified the firewall rules to allow connections on the specific port. Doing this, we were able to resolve the services temporarily unavailable error. However, as mentioned earlier, there could also be other causes that can lead to this error, such as backend server being overloaded or at capacity and is unable to handle any new request. Firewall rules not set to accept requests from specific source IP. This is also termed as IP whitelisting. SSL handshake failures between MP and the backend server. Check out the video description for more information on 500 internal server errors and relevant troubleshooting playbooks for your easier friends. And if you would like to know more about other possible causes for 500 internal server errors, please watch our other videos in this module and subscribe if you would like to get notified on future videos. Thanks and see you in the next video.